Good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this morning's morning prayer. Today is Monday, the 4th of July. Well, Independence Day in America, that is. And um, today we are also remembering St. Thomas, the Apostle. And uh, so we're going to read the collect for St. Thomas and, um, and the reading in the New Testament that is always that is that is the the reading that is probably most memorable about thomas uh, in our minds so let's begin this new day and new week that god in his mercy has given us and um, begin it of course with him at the very at the very start and by god's grace the end as well let's pray O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, ruler and judge of all. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of this age that is passing away, May the light of your presence, which the saints enjoy, surround our steps as we journey on. May we reflect your glory this day, and so be made ready to see your face in the heavenly city where night shall be no more. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all. To you be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time, you made us your image. And in these last days, you have spoken to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Your spirit ever renew our lives, and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your king. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. The heavens bear witness to your wonders. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. The assembly of your saints proclaims your truth. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. 
steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. The Lord has anointed me and, br and sent me to bring good news to the oppressed. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, to comfort all who mourn, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. For as the earth puts forth her blossom and the seeds in the garden spring up, so shall the Lord God make righteousness and praise blossom before all the nations. You shall be called priests of the Lord. They shall speak of you as ministers of our God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord has anointed me and sent me to bring good news to the oppressed. And the collect this morning, the collect for St. Thomas, uh, the Apostle. Almighty and eternal God, who for the firmer foundation of our faith allowed your holy Apostle Thomas to doubt the resurrection of your son till word and sight convinced him. Grant to us who have not seen that we also may believe. And so confess Christ as our Lord and our God, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the collect for today. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our psalm this morning, <clears throat> our psalm is Psalm 92. Psalm 92. <clears throat> Psalm 92, it is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. To the music of the ten-stringed lyre and the melody of the harp, for you make me glad by your deeds, Lord. I sing for joy at what your hands have done. How great are your works, Lord! How profound your thoughts! Senseless people do not know, fools do not understand, that though the wicked spring up like grass and all evildoers flourish, they will be destroyed forever. But you, Lord, are forever exalted. For surely your enemies, Lord, surely your enemies will perish. All evildoers will be scattered. You have exalted my horn like that of a wild ox. Fine oils have been poured on me. My eyes have seen the defeat of my adversaries. My ears have heard the rout of my wicked foes. 
The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a, like a cedar of Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming, The Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, one of the things I like about this particular psalm is, I mean, it's, it's a great psalm, it's a praise psalm, isn't it, to God? But look at what it says in verse 7, that though the wicked spring up like grass, and all evildoers flourish, they will be destroyed forever. You know, when we look out on the world, and it looks like the wicked are flourishing, the wicked are getting away, as it were, with their wicked deeds. This psalm and the scriptures throughout reminds us that they will be destroyed forever. The day is coming. The day is coming when judgment will come upon the wicked. And no, it doesn't look like it now. And Putin seems to be getting away with all his wicked deeds and other wicked people that you may know. He's always the one that comes to mind these days. But wicked people will not get away with their wickedness. They will be destroyed forever. All evildoers will be scattered. All your enemies will perish. Verse 9. And, and so when it looks like evil is triumphing, evil is victorious, these scriptures remind us to get our perspective right, sisters and brothers, that we are reminded that the day is coming when the wicked will be destroyed forever, forever. And that gives me hope that people like Putin will not get away with his evil deeds. One day God will judge him. And frankly, that day, in my view, can't come soon enough for those wicked people. In the meantime, we are, we look out and we, are, we endure and we pray. We pray for their downfall. We pray for their downfall. We pray for them to be brought down by God, mighty power. Let me read a meditation for today. The prescript for this psalm tells us that it was meant for the Sabbath. What comes into your mind when you hear the word Sabbath? Perhaps you think simply of Sunday or of church. Perhaps you think of Christians who treat the Sabbath in a very conscientious way and are careful to do no work. Maybe not much at all comes into your mind. You know it is associated with ancient Judaism, but not much else. The Sabbath is something built into the very creation of the world. We see the first Sabbath in the, in the opening two chapters of the Bible, as God himself rests on the Sabbath day. The Sabbath has been put in place for God's people to show us that he is a God of rest, and that in trusting him, we ourselves find our true rest in him. The Sabbath was not instituted merely to be another rule for God's people to keep. As Jesus says in Mark chapter 2 verse 27. It is a gracious gift in order for God's people to gain a foretaste of the final rest in the new heavens and new earth we will one day enjoy. That is when we will experience the concluding description of this psalm. The righteous flourish like the palm tree. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. They will bear fruit in old age. They are ever full of sap and green. 
verses 12 to 14. Are you in haste today? Are you frantic on the inside and the outside? Do you paint smiles over internal distress? That is not what Christ came to offer. Instead, he came to offer eternal rest. Hebrews 4 and verse 9 which we anticipate each and every Lord's Day as we rest from our worldly labors. Bring to Jesus your worries, your cares, your concerns, your anxieties. Unload your burdens on him. Above all, give him your sins. He died and rose again to give us rest for our souls now and one day rest for both soul and body perfectly forever unendingly amen and we look for that day sisters and brothers when we find perfect rest in him our new testament reading we're going to read the 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 the, the, refer, the the scripture that is that is mostly associated with thomas and that is john chapter 20 from verse 24 to 29 <clears throat> John chapter 20 24 to 29 <clears throat> ah, let me go back just a second or right, 24 now Thomas also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand inside his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were in the house again. And Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So the, the, um, the reading, as I said, is associated mostly with St. Thomas. Um, Thomas has come down throughout history with a bad, I mean, uh, you know, he's gotten a bad press, you could say as doubting Thomas, doubting Thomas, which I think is unfortunate because Thomas, Thomas's doubt is significant, sisters and brothers, for us to understand. Thomas heard that Jesus is risen. The other disciples said to him, we have seen the Lord, he's alive. And Thomas, being one of the 12, Thomas walked with Jesus for three and a half years, sisters and brothers. Thomas is one of Jesus' hand-picked disciples, chosen from among the lot in, 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 um, in Galilee. And Thomas's response is that unless I see for myself, unless I touch for myself, unless I experience him for myself, I will not believe. Now, that is not for let, let's let's face it first of all sisters and brothers that is not something bad that thomas was saying in there are two reasons for that one is that thomas is going to be one of the a, a, one of the apostles of christ now in order for him to tell people about the resurrection of jesus he needed to experience it himself the early disciples are the ones who told us that Jesus is alive. If Thomas 
himself didn't see Jesus alive. How can he then go around preaching that Jesus is alive? The point that Thomas is making is that I need to be convinced. And there's nothing wrong with saying I need to be convinced. I need, I need reassurance that this is true. If I go out there, I'm going to put my life on the line for something that you told me. <laughs> now, I don't know if it's true or not. I like you guys, but I don't know if that's the case. I need to experience him for myself. And so Thomas needed that assurance. Thomas needed to be an eyewitness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because only as, as an eyewitness could he then convince others, proclaim with certainty, the, with credibility, that Jesus is alive. So Thomas needed that. The rest of us don't. And in fact, Jesus made the point that blessed are those who don't see, but believe on the word of people like Thomas. Because the rest of us throughout history believe that Jesus is alive because of those early disciples who saw and believed. Because their eyewitness testimony is credible, we believe today. And Jesus says we are blessed because we believe on the witness of the eyewitnesses, on the testimony of the eyewitnesses. Thomas is one of those eyewitnesses. And Thomas needed to be one of those eyewitnesses. Or else his word could not be credible. If he goes out preaching that Jesus is alive. When he himself never witnessed it himself. That's why Paul needed to see Jesus. Paul needed to know himself. And Paul's experience of Jesus as the resurrected Christ. Was convincing to him that he was able to go and preach that Christ is risen indeed. The second reason why, to, why Thomas needed to get this reassurance is that, sisters and brothers, let's face it. In a sense, we all need this. We all need to experience Jesus for ourselves. Now, that's important. No amount of argument no amount of, of, of talk is going to truly convince anybody of the resurrected Christ. You and I, Thomas and everybody else, need to have a, 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 a spiritual experience of Jesus, the, the risen Christ in our lives. And, 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 and so it's, it's one thing to say, to tell people Jesus is alive and people say, yeah, 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 whatever, blah, 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 bye. But unless they experience by the power of the Holy Spirit, the, the power of the risen Christ in their lives, unless they themselves have had an experience with Christ, they are not going to believe. And that is one of the things Thomas is saying. I need to experience him for myself. Unless I experience him, I cannot believe. I'm not gullible. And sisters and brothers, you know, sometimes we read the New Testament, we think these people were so gullible, they'll believe anything. That is so not true. I mean, Thomas is a good example of somebody who was not gullible. Tom, they, they, you know, they were just as skeptical about somebody coming from the dead like you and I are today. If we hear that somebody died and is risen again, you're going to say, please, that's not true. Unless I see it for myself. You know, you hear that some, you were there when the person died and was laid in a tomb. And a couple of days later, people are telling you they've seen him. They walk in the streets. I, I spoke to him. I talked to him. You would feel the exact same way Thomas feels. You say, ah, that's nonsense. I don't believe that. I'm not gullible. <laughs> I don't just believe anything you tell me. Unless I've experienced it for myself. And that was what Thomas was saying, sisters and brothers. So it's important that Thomas's doubt is not used to ridicule Thomas, but, also, but rather to elevate Thomas. 
to see him as someone who was just not gullible to just believe anything he, he's told, but someone who says, unless I experience him for myself, I am not going to believe. And by the way, that's the, that's the attitude that we all need to take. We don't need to experience Jesus physically, but unless you experience him spiritually, you won't believe. I can guarantee you, you're not going to believe. Because you need to have a personal experience of the risen Christ before you can truly believe in him and that will come through the power of the holy spirit hey, let's pray let's pray amen and so lord we thank you for thomas we thank you for the lesson the doubting lesson of thomas that lord we are not to be gullible and just believe anything that we hear but but test this test the truths test the testimonies of others so that we can experience for ourselves the truth of what others have told us lord we thank you that jesus is indeed alive and thomas received that reassurance and since then every believer has been reassured reassured by of your resurrected of your resurrected power in us that we too have experienced your resurrection power. Thank you, Lord, for Thomas. And thank you for reassuring us all that you are indeed alive. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we bring to you the concerns and cares of this day as we embark on this new day. Lord, we don't know what this day will bring. In our travels, in our going and coming, we ask that you will be with us, guide us, strengthen us. Let your Holy Spirit fill us today and empower us to be more like Jesus today than we were yesterday. To be stronger in our faith against the powers of the enemy of the evil one who is seeking to steal, kill and destroy us. So Lord, empower us today to take our stand against the foe, the formidable foe, who is, who attacks us daily. Lord, we pray that you will give us grace to stand in your strength and your might today, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Be with us, Lord, in all our prayers and direct our way toward the attainment of salvation that among the changes and chances of this mortal life, we may always be defended by your gracious help through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, I pray for the family of the funeral that I have today. I pray, Lord, that you'll be with all of us in that service as they say goodbye to their loved one. We pray, Lord, that you'll strengthen those who mourn Comfort them in their weakness, we pray, in their distress, in their loss. Be with them today. And all those who are mourning the passing of a loved one today, we pray for those people in Copenhagen who, who lost loved ones because of a, a gunman over the weekend. We pray for them. Lord, we ask that you'll have mercy on their souls. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember all who are sick today, Lord, in your mercy, and grant them the power, the presence, your power and presence. May they experience healing, comfort, um, free from pain and suffering. Lord, strengthen their faith as much as their bodies and minds, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Christ be with me. Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me.
Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord watch over you. May the Lord protect you. May the Lord guide you today, sisters and brothers, whatever you're doing, wherever you're going. May the Lord bless you in your coming and going today and this week and forever. Amen. Have a blessed day, sisters and brothers.